truth, yeah, it's war time. The Most High is gonna have mercy on you, Black Native Americans, if you return back to Him. It's war time. We are gods on this earth. We are God's chosen people. The Black, yeah, it's war time. Calling all Jews. Blood in your veins. It's the same that was in Christ's veins. You say that don't matter. It's our job as the watchmen to warn our people. Wake up from the lies that you're in. We must return as the Israelites, because that's who we are. You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hey, welcome back to Wartime Radio. This is Officer Yuanathan, and to my left, Officer Kaliah. And on my right, Officer Aton. Hey, we're going to continue part two: fornication. Are you a thought or are you a simp? Hey, we're going to start off immediately with um, Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse twenty-nine. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse twenty-nine. Bring it out. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So you know what? We should be raising our children, our daughters. Not to cause them to be a whore. We should be raising them correctly, according to the laws of God. But we're raising them right now, according to the world. And our young children are being led and being, their young minds are being impressed by their oppressors. It's being destroyed. I mean, totally destroyed. Right. And, you know, you see, we see our little children, our little daughters in parades. I see uh, two-year-olds twerking. With tutus on, right? That's what they call, right? Them little, them little, uh, little, them, them, them ugly, <laughs> sinful dresses, right? Tutus. You know, um, it's a shame when a child can learn to twerk before they can learn to speak. And we have to do a better job. Read that from the top again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. Listen, and. Almost every single black community throughout the United States, throughout the earth, there's nothing but whoredom. There's nothing but fornication, adultery. Hey, this scripture has been fulfilled. We are in the midst of whoredom throughout the whole land. That's what our people are known for. They created languages, thoughts, simps. Based off of the fact that the whole land has fallen into whoredom. They got a new name. Throat baby. Huh? Whoa. They got a new name for, for our women. Notice. And this, new, this new name only reflects to our women. The so-called black woman, Hispanic woman, and Native American woman. They are now calling themselves, or our men are now coining them as throat babies. Now, we, we don't got to get too explicit. We know what that, we know what that is implying. Throat. Can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> bro, bro. someone calling your daughter throat baby? No, no, no. Oh man, that's a damn shame. That, that's oh <laughs> man. Read. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> Read that again. Leviticus chapter twenty nineteen verse twenty nine. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, mm -hmm. lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. The land become full of wickedness. We are in the midst of wickedness throughout the whole black community. And there's a story that happened in New Jersey that happened to one of the young daughters of our people. And I want to bring this story out because these type of stories is happening way too often in the black community. And it's all because that we didn't uh, stop our daughter from, from being a whore. We are, we are not raising our children according to these laws, statutes, and commandments. We are letting the streets run, raise our children. You got this? Bring it out. This is on ABC News. This happened Thursday, May the 20th, 2000, 2021 at 8.26 p.m. 14-year-old gives birth and hands baby to customer at a restaurant in New Jersey. First of all, we're speaking about a 14-year-old giving birth. Dang you know, that's a child, man. That's a straight up child. At 14 years old, I was still running up and down the street playing tag football, riding to, bicycles. Right. right. And now we got 14 year olds giving birth. Read. Jersey City, New Jersey. A teenager walked into a restaurant in Jersey City on Wednesday afternoon with a newborn, 
handed the baby to the customer, and then left. She gave birth. Keep in mind, she didn't have birth in a hospital. Right. She probably had the baby... No, no, to near a dumpster in the cut in the hallway. She, she, she just birthed this baby out of uh, someplace random. Right. Well, you got to mm. ask yourself: Where is her mother? Where is her father? Where is those who? Because I mean, she's giving away the baby. You tell me that nine months, nobody noticed that this child was pregnant. Nobody. She nobody noticed that this child was walking around with a stomach big enough to re- to give birth. <laughs> Right, and she just walked in a restaurant like she by herself. So it don't sound like she even went in there with with her parents and nothing. She went in there on her own and handed the baby over. And you know, that's how much she valued a life, right? Because she don't know nothing about life, right? You know? She hadn't learned. <laughs> this is a it's a, it's a sad day for the black man, woman, and children in America. In this day and age, because these kids, they their idea of life is social media. Their idea of life is the the circumstances they're brought up in, and we've been seeing our babies have babies in our community, but none of none of the black community, none of the men in the black community have had the the testosterone or the, the testicles to stand up and speak out against what's going on in their community and find solutions. For the, the 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 situations going on in our community, this sister just had a she's fourteen year old years old just birthed a baby randomly, walked into a restaurant, and handed it to a random stranger. To a random stranger, a customer, but, a customer trying to eat. Right, right. And, and what's sad about it is it gets worse. Right. The story gets worse. Great. Right. A teenager walked into a restaurant in Jersey City on Wednesday afternoon with a newborn. Handed the baby to a customer and then left. The fourteen-year-old mother walked up to the counter and claimed she found the infant. She found the infant girl. Restaurant owner Frankie and Griller said the teen handed the baby to a good Samaritan and ran away. A good Samaritan. Uh, you know what? It just happened to be that that was a good Samaritan that got the baby. Right. Because it could have been a child molester. Right. And that and that was of that was of the Lord. Whether you right. whether you can see it or not. That her giving that baby to the uh character of people who are still not keeping the commandments of God, let that let me say that. But have the integrity enough to want to take care of the baby, that is just that's an act of God. I mean Message. you gotta think not only are we raising our daughters fourteen years old to be sexual active. You gotta ask yourself, who was she sexual active to? What 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 grown man probably impregnated this fourteen year old child? Right, right, and that's that's what I was waiting to get to. It ain't it ain't. She probably ain't even sleep with another fourteen year old. Boy, right, you know, young man or nothing. She probably slept with a thirty something year old dude. Right, who did that to her because we we see that way too much. Yeah, I remember when I was in high school, and you would see grown men dropping off fourteen year olds, fifteen year olds. You picking them up, dropping them off from school. This is the type of thing that goes on in our community, in our neighborhood, that we keep silent about. Right. You know, there's many molesters that's running through the black neighborhood that, you know what, that's somebody's son who's selling dope. That's somebody's son that's gangbanging that they say, hey, that's the person they be crying for. When he gets mm-hmm. shot, he get locked up, saying my son was good. But that son be straight up sleeping with little young girls. Right. And nobody says nothing. We we close our eyes to the to the wickedness that's going on in our community. Read that verse from uh, from the top again. Leviticus. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse twenty nine. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You know what? That's what we're doing. We're raising our children to be prostitutes. We dressing them like whores. We letting them carry on like whores. We we, we acting like they're grown. We sending them out the house and letting them do what they want. Mm-hmm. We letting them become whores. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. And the land has fallen into whoredom. Read. And the land become full of wickedness. This right here, having a child at 14 years old, dropping a child off inside of a store, giving it to somebody you don't know, turning your back on the child to, like, to never see it again. That It can't get no more wicked than that. That's what we do now. We don't even say, you know what, we're going to go through the adoption process. We're just going to walk in the store, drop it off, and, and roll out. Right at the store. You know what's what's and the read read the that bottom of that the bottom of that precept again. 
Lest the land fall to whoredom. The scripture says, that lest the land fall to whoredom. Read on. And the land become full of wickedness. And the land become full of wickedness. Now, this is implying that the world will become full of wickedness. When Mosai gave the law, statutes, and commandments to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you will, we're supposed to set the standard of righteousness on this earth. That's why when we do wickedness, such as this, it says the whole land will fall into wickedness. Let's get, let, give me real quick Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 25. That's what I want. To my righteousness? Yeah. Yeah. Let me get that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Come on. And it shall come to and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments uh -huh. before the Lord our God. So it says it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. Read on. As he hath commanded us. As he's commanded us. This what the brother pulled, what officer you want to pulled in uh, Leviticus chapter 19. This is a commandment. Thou shalt not prostitute thy daughter to be a whore. Because the land is going to fall to righteousness. I mean, the world is going to fall to righteousness. We have wickedness. to up, we, to wickedness. We, we have to, up, we appreciate that. We have to uphold these commandments. That is what we have to do. Like one of our uh, our, our deacons I say, you got to upload the laws of God in your, in your, in your mind. That's what we got to right. do. Right. Playing mm. games. And, and you should know, we go back to that article? Right, cause we it's it's yeah, it gets damn, worse. It gets it, worse. This is crazy. Start at, uh where it says uh, Elise Scott. Elise Scott and her boyfriend Walter Coco were eating lunch when the teen asked for help. Scott didn't hesitate. I said, "Do you mind if I check the baby's vitals?" She readily handed the baby over to me, so my focus went right onto the baby. Scott said. The teen mother walked out leaving Scott with the newborn girl who still had a portion of the umbilical cord attached. Dang. Hmm. Read on. Scott and her boyfriend could tell the baby was having trouble breathing. So this baby was having an issue breathing still attached to the umbilical cord. So, so that's how you know she was, She did not go have this right. baby at a hospital. The right. first thing they do is cut that off. Right. First thing they do is detach it. And you know what's sad is the fact that you know she didn't even try to seek to save the baby life. She was she was looking to dump the baby off on somebody mm -hmm. while the baby is fighting to live. Wow! Police were called and quickly responded with medical gear and oxygen. Fortunately, Scott is trained in CPR and first aid. Once I applied the oxygen mask to the baby, all of a sudden we heard the most beautiful cry, and the baby started moving. She slightly opened her, up her eyes and then she closed her eyes. But the sweetest thing was when she got hungry and she was trying to suckle on the oxygen mask so we knew she was okay after that, Scott said. So so pretty much, you know, you're good right there. So what's going on is, you, like, like you said, this 14-year-old dropped this baby off, just had the baby somewhere random, mm -hmm. and then took the baby in the store. Now, now as far as, the you know, the mother... 14 year old she knew she was a child and couldn't take care of this baby she understood that but the fact of the matter is is that she had been taught to be the way she was which caused her to have a baby exactly at 14 years old exactly by tv and media and everything else that's going on around her because the people that are in her life are not showing her god's laws uh can i get a script right quick yeah real, yeah go ahead yeah let's get that um deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1 let's do that we can we now the way you fix this stuff is we have to come back to the Bible. We can't look the Israelites, we don't have the option to go outside of what God said. Everybody else can do what they want to do, but the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you must do what God said. Right. Read that. That's right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse one. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Uh-huh. That ye might do them in the land where you go to possess it. So we were taught commandments. And let's see what we were supposed to do with these commandments. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. This 14-year-old girl should have been getting that her whole life. Mm -hmm. But instead, she had been getting the twerk videos, the BET videos, now all the YouTube videos that, and crap that they got going out. That's that, what she's been getting. Atlanta Housewives videos. Right. Wap videos. Exactly. Twerk videos. Exactly. That's what she watching. So then she goes and do what she been seeing all her during life. Exactly. Read on. 
and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So as parents, we must teach our children as we sit with them in a house, not set them in front of the TV and let the TV tell them what to do. We are supposed to tell the children what to do as parents. That's hey, but right. you know what? Not to cut you off. The TV, oh, you good. The TV and the TV and the video game. Because now on some of these video games, these video games are teaching the youth to continue in that wickedness. That's exactly it's, what it is. It's furthering the wickedness. It's a it's a I can't even remember the game. I can't even remember Crash, the name of the game. Drink, something auto. No. Uh-uh, uh-uh. There's a game that you got on your phone. I'm going, man, I'm going to try to find it when we go to break. There is a game that they got. It was on the internet that teaches children. So they'll be playing one game on their phone, a little innocent game. Little ads pop up. And if they click that ad, it'll download another game on their phone. That game, kids get the decision. They are little avatars, meaning fake people. They'll, they'll be in these relationships. Hey, and they'll give them a question. Do you want to sleep with this person or not? And they can hit the button, yes or no. Bruh. Wow. This is on children's phones. What's the name of it? Say it in the mic. Is it The Sims? Bruh. No. No, man. That's that's a old. Man, that's not the game, brother. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, and this is a perfect example of I why we up. call this show wartime. Right. Because there is a war to destroy our children. Yes. Unbelievable. And the I, most high is giving you the what? The game plan to the, to combat it. Exactly. That, this is the game plan so your kids mind don't get corrupted. Read that verse for the top oh, yeah. again for the office. Oh yeah. Verse and thou, 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. The them thou shalt teach the children God's laws. Read on. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Why that look, cause now you know that people don't even look nowadays people don't even sit as a family at the table to eat no more. If they do, they all on their phone. Oh yeah, everybody holding their phone. They don't even do that no more. Got fifty TVs in the house and everything else. No, they said you teach them, so you must communicate with your children, parents. Read on. And when thou walkest by the way. When you walk in with your children. So that means your children must be where you at. Right. You, they know they ain't supposed to defend and fend for themselves and you go about your business and leave them out. Right. They supposed to go with you. Because how they going to go with you? If y'all walking and you see something, you're supposed to point it out to your child exactly. and say this is what you do and what you don't do. To give them the example. You took the words right out of my mouth. Because I was going to say these women should be pointing at the sin of these other women and saying, see. Don't dress like this. They can't do it because their kids ain't with them. Don't carry yourself like this. No, the word, the reason they can't do it is because the child gonna look up and say, "But mama, you dress like that." <laughs> Dang, it's a video where the little where the little daughter was talking about her mama. Oh yeah, by the hair that during blonde hair in her head, and she was like, "You hate yourself, don't you?" Right, right. right. Hey, I love that video. Hey, <laughs> read on. Read on. <laughs> Finish that. Finish that. And when thou liest down, uh huh. And when thou rises up, so the bedtime stories. Should be about our forefathers keeping the commandments of God. That's right. Right. Hey, but you know what's happening? They sitting there watching their mothers. And you know what they're listening to? They're listening to their mothers talk about how many simps they running through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, many, how many simps they getting to pay their bill. They like bill. They run. Hey, they rent. And they learning from mom. And you know what? By the time they turn 12, 13, they well schooled. And they're ready to act like mama. Exactly. Not not only are they acting like mother, they dressing like mama. And you know what they go do? They go find somebody like they mama being with. Mm -hmm. They go get a man. They don't no, go no. get somebody that's they 13, go get 14. a boy or mm -hmm. simp. Because, right. And which which and which goes back to this article, like you just said, mm -hmm. because that's this is how you know she laid with a simp. Because that simp knew he couldn't take care of that child too. Yeah, and he couldn't take it to the hospital either. Exactly. Right. Because she would have went to the hospital. No, no, let's get it right. He was a child molesting simp because he didn't right. want to be known. That's what I'm saying. She so he couldn't. So he couldn't take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if he'd have took her, he going to jail. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. Matter of fact, hey, give me Isaiah three and twelve, because this is what's going on. You know, we have babies having babies, and what what happens? The Bible is telling you, you go, the whole land is going to fall into wickedness. Mm -hmm. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Well, who's our oppressors now? Who got us afraid to come out the house now? Is it the white man? Because he really not in your neighborhoods. But you got the blood. You got the cribs. You got the gangster the disciples. You got them little knuckleheads on the street corner. Mm -hmm. That's who you worried about. 
You worried about your own people oppressing you now. Right. These these are somebody's children who ain't been raised right. Right. Who ain't been raised upon these law, statutes, and commandments. They are they are your oppressors now. Mm-hmm. Read. And women rule over them. Who will rule over them? Women rule over them. Not mother and father. And women rule over them. These single mothers. You got whole projects now. It's nothing but single mothers. And they got one baby daddy, two baby daddy, three baby daddy. They ruling over a bunch of little demons. Right. Read. And women rule over them. Oh, my people. They which lead thee, cause thee to err. They cause them to what? Cause thee to err. Because why? They didn't do what God commanded them in um, Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Mm-hmm. They didn't talk to them, by the way. <coughs> they right. didn't talk them to them when they was by the table. They didn't talk them to them when they went to sleep. The game plan that the Most High gave us to raise our children so they can combat the wickedness that's going on in this earth against the wickedness of our enemies to try to destroy our children, we left them defenseless. Right. It was never applied. Right. It was never applied. You know, and uh, you finish that? No, you need the last. Oh, yeah, you need that, that yeah. last part. It goes with what he was just saying. Yeah, read that out. Mm-hmm. They which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. They done destroy the path that the Most High laid out for exactly. us. Exactly, laid out the foundation for success, the foundation for us to rise back up as a nation. Right. And you know what? The only way we're gonna rise back as a nation is to come back to the simplicity of God's plan mm-hmm. to, to right. marry, to marry our wives. To raise our children and to teach them commandments. Right. Because those children will become your avengers. Yes, they do. They're going to become your avengers. They're going to be, they're going to stand up and help take down this wicked society. Because why? They're going to be well versed in these scriptures. And what it say? Raise them up in the path they're going to go. They'll yeah. never depart from it. This is our defense. But look, and that's what they like to quote. They like to quote that script. Mm-hmm. They ain't nobody applying what that's no. really talking about. Right. They'd be like, oh, we were raised my child up in the way that they're supposed to go. They should never depart from it. Yeah, but you sitting up here in the darn Christian church following all kinds of crap, letting your kids do whatever the heck they want to do, and then you'll sit up here and tell other people to sit up and not admit that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. That's the first sign of repentance, admitting that you did not do what you were supposed to do and then fix it. But if you don't never admit that, you're going to keep on going down a wrong path because you got too much pride. Our people got too much pride. We think we know everything every time. Right. You know, and you said something a minute ago. You said that uh, about bringing down this society. Our people don't realize that this society is what has caused us to fall into the depths of the deep sea that we're now drowning in. And they don't understand how God's laws being applied are going to change this society, how we, how the Israelites keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments are going to change not only the society but the whole world. Which brought me back to the point of why I pulled uh, Deuteronomy six and twenty five the first time. Read that for me one more time. Then I want to get Deuteronomy four and six to kind of line that back up because all of this is the scriptural medicine and 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 the cure to fixing our illnesses in our community. Read that. That's right. Deuteronomy chapter six verse twenty five. Read it out. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. So it's a, it's going to be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments uh, for the Lord our God. Jump to Deuteronomy 4 and 6 real quick in doing these commandments, about doing these commandments, keeping these commandments. Read that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Now keep in mind, we previously, we previously read that the whole land would fall into wickedness. All right, read. Keep, therefore, and do them. Keep what? Keep the commandments. Keep them, therefore, and do them. Come on. For this is your wisdom uh-huh. and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Read on. Which shall hear of all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the nations that are oppressing us, they can't oppress us if we're keeping the commandments. They can't oppress us when we understand how to train up our child in the law, statutes, and commandments of God, and we do them. They're going to look at us and say, "What? hey, surely God is with them. This is a, this is a wise and understanding people. The, the most high God is walking with them. Look at how they live. But now they look at us like, these some niggas, thoughts and sims, right. throat babies. Right. What the hell is this? Dang. Mm. Hey, go to um, Proverbs 20, 26. Because, hey, 
officer quoted that scripture, I want to bring that scripture out. Because like we said, we have to do better. We have to come back to the most high law, most high uh, law, most high God laws. We got to come back to that. We got to bring ourselves to walk in the, that straight path, the straight and narrow path. Because right now, we all over the place. Yep. And, and all over the place to destruction. Mm-hmm. Read. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in a way he should go. And you know, the only thing we've been training up our child to do is to be basketball players, football players, cheerleaders, you know, thoughts, simps. That's what we train up our child. We ain't training them up in the way that they should go, which is what? To follow the commandments of God. That's the whole duty of man. We are meant to be rulers, gods on this earth. Anything other than being that, we went off the path. We went off the path and we following man. Read. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Why would you ever depart from something that's going to give you rulership of the earth? Why would you want to depart from something that's going to take away your inheritance? They don't understand that they're royalty. Right. Yep. They'll say what? It was just it. They'll, they'll say, I'm a queen. They'll say, I'm a queen. I'm a, I'm a black queen. <laughs> you you right. I got a definition for you. Oh, bring I'm, I'm a blout. Oh, you you going to bring it out. You got it. Man, no. You got it. Hey, oh, look, bring that thing man. up. Look I up. got you. Queen. Mm. Queen. Q, Q, Q what? E-A-N? Q, Q-U-E-A-N. Q-U-E-A-N. Yeah. Because that's what our sisters say. I'm a black queen. But queen's a real queen, which is Q-U-E-E-N. <laughs> Don't right, carry so, themselves like that. Yeah, so queen, definition of queen, a bold, brazen woman, hussy. Hold on. Q U E A N. Mm-hmm. That's that queen. Don't let, let let's make that clear. Q U E A N. Read it again. A bold, brazen woman, mm-hmm. hussy. Uh oh. A prostitute. A girl or unmarried woman. So she right. She is a queen. <laughs> well, hold on. I, and there's another one. An impudent or ill-behaved girl Uh-oh. or woman. Got <laughs> hey, you know, you bringing out that definition. Unbelievable. Like, most high going to bring out one, too. Because, like I say, they think they're queens. They are. They just ain't that proper queen. Right. Hey, give me uh, Sirach chapter 26, verse 9. Because, you know... I can spot that queen out that you're talking about. Because <laughs> she's going to be known in her look. Mm-hmm. Mm. And guess what? Our women, they ain't not hiding how they looking. Read. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 9. Uh-huh. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Oh, so. Oh, that's where them frog lids come, lids hey, come from. Man. So I can tell if a woman is a whore by how she look. Yeah. So you know that's biblical. So so <laughs> and they say, you know what? Don't judge me how I look. Mm-hmm. Read that again. I just want to make sure that hey, I'm going to listen to what the most high telling me instead of what some sister is trying to tell me that she's not a whore. You trying to identify the thought? I'm trying mm-hmm. to identify the thought. Now, hey, you know what? I like to identify something when I see it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Is that a righteous sister or is that a hoe? I want to know. <laughs> that's I want to know. That's a t-shirt like bars. Bars. Bring it out. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Whoa. Dang, man. You know, see, that's that spiritual, me, man. Eyelids. That's spiritual. Them big old. Them big old frog lids. Them big frog lids that they, they got. They blinking like that. Look, look like a car. Look like a headlight with a shade on top of it. Hey, hey, they actually put them on their cars. Hey, right, hey, they do. Hey, what did Bishop say? <laughs> Who raised you? Who taught hey, you listen. that that look good? Hey, most of have said it in the scriptures, but they manifested it on their own eyelids and on their cars. <laughs> mm-hmm. You better they shut go. your black Christian mouth. <laughs> hey, read the next verse. Verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless. That, that little 14 year old was a little shameless. Mm-hmm. That was a, exactly. She was a little thought following her mama. Read. Keep her in in straightly. Keep her in the house. Keep her in the house. We let our children just run the streets, do what they want to do. And we got people just snatching kids up off the streets, mm-hmm. prostituting them, sending them all over the country to be to work in uh, whores, I mean, the whorehouses and stuff. We ain't even uh, checking on our children. 
We just let them do what they want to do. I remember I used to walk my child to school every single day. And now we just let our kids go or do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. I just, God hey, said, keep them in the house. Right. Read on down because you, yeah. ju- you just said you, what you just said it. Read it. Keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Whoa. Overmuch liberty is teen heavy. sex. Teen sex. Mm-hmm. That's that's overmuch liberty. That's too much dang on freedom. Mm-hmm. Right. Too much damn freedom. Right. You know, the things that kids are doing now at 12, 13, 11, 10, you know, it was unheard of, unheard of. Hey, they were still just learning how to put the, the wipe their nose clean when I was coming up. Exactly. And now they out there doing what? Laying they, on their back. They was all in the house learning how to braid hair. Playing house now. Playing house. They ain't even playing house. No, yeah, they, yeah, they, they ain't, ain't no husband and wife there. So Some yeah, of them bringing house. babies in the house. There it is. <laughs> exactly. That's what oh, you got it. Hey, look, you're going to have to read on down. Read on down. Verse 11, watch over an impudent eye and marvel not, marvel not if she trespass against thee. <laughs> That's what our people do. They actually do the opposite of what this said. Mm-hmm. It said, don't marvel. Don't sit up there and play with your children. Right. They be like, look, look, look. Hey, t- 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 tell Christina to come here. Do it, Christina. Play that, play that song, uh, Christina over there. Throwing it back, right. throwing it back. Or, or she ain't but a year and a half. And they say, uh, and they say that that's are they just being kids? Exactly. And they, but they laughing and and, and, and joking. Mm-hmm. And, pu- yeah. and right. they said, do not. What it say? It say, and marvel not if she trespass against thee. So if they go against what you said, it's a trespass. Mm-hmm. It said, don't marvel, don't be shocked that they went against you. Read on. She will open her mouth. As a thirsty traveler. Because you gave us so much freedom, throat now baby. they trespass against you. Now you got a throat baby. Throat baby. Well, Read on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain and drink of every water near her. Everybody. Then they get that that false that that bad name in the neighborhood that we all we all knew that one person when mm-hmm. we grew up who that was. Mm-hmm. Now it's everybody in the neighborhood. Now you got a name of throat, baby. Everybody know you're thirsty. Right. Now, now everybody you, trying to fill that throat. Now mm-hmm. you got a, Now you having a baby and drop, dropping them off in the restaurant. <laughs> That's what happened. Bad, bro. Finish that script out. By every hedge will she sit down mm-hmm. and open her quiver against every arrow. She gonna open her legs. That arrow there goes for men. Mm-hmm. She's gonna open her legs to every man. Got bodies on top of bodies, and she ain't even out of high school yet. Read. Hey, with that, you know what? We're going to go to yeah, the yeah, mission. We're going to take bad. us a break, and we're going to uh, go into the new song by the Benjavites called Good Vibes. Hey, check this out on OriginalRoyalty.com. Hey, there we go.
we got in on the IO DJ. Turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate. Give me this one for me, see they might be spiritualized Still I ain't doing all this trouble when the pressure rise Man, I'll be all so lean, I'll be giddy and be stay alive Love, sweat and tears, end your self-sacrifice Still not give up, cause my mind rest for the price Now just give me strength for you, back up my enemies Them full of hatred, them full of jealousy Man, you show to the thing, we no fake, we no counterfeit I know for them, what they mean, what them full of shit be perfect, Israel never quit. After be purged in the fire, so me tell you this. Man, to the thing we not be a queen or counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of full of Be perfect, Israel never quit. After be purged in the fire, so me tell you this. Turn up the lights from the start. Bring tune, pull it up, celebrate, cause we not carry God in the hand. We not carry God in the hand. Turn up the lights from the start. Bring tune, pull it up, celebrate cause We no carry God in the hour mm-hmm. We no carry God in the hour Check, 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 y'all. We are back with Wartime Radio. Y'all make sure y'all go and check out that new song by the Benjamites, all right? You can find that music at www.israelunite.org uh, on the original royalty music link. So you click on that link, which will be a link to originalroyaltymusic.com and check out the Benjamites. Their new album is out. It's all righteous, and you should check it out. Hey, we got to get that righteous music. It's, it's time for a new change in this earth. All this music that's uh, destroying our youth, you know what? We're we bringing back that righteous music, that that's truth right. music. That's right. Hey, um, I want to go into something. Um, because, you know, as men, and we're going to help raise up our society, help raise up our people, we got to uh, come out to these conditions that we're in. We got we to gotta uplift the black woman. Because if we don't uplift the black woman, how do we expect the children to be. Hey, give me uh, Sirach 26 and 25. Bring it out. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 25. Bring it out. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. You know, if hey, a woman showing her cleavage, her butt cheeks hanging out of her clothes, you know, the, the way that our women act on the beach when they go out, you know, mm-hmm. they have no shame. And as men, hey, you're going to stand up to be men. First thing you need to do is start rejecting women like that. But, you know, they like that. Even in the church. you got. I know women right now in the church that dress, they wear a tight dress to church on Sunday, which is not the Sabbath day, by the way. And then on Monday, they're back in a skimpy, cleavage showing dress. And guess what? The, what? the person in particular I'm talking about, is uh, 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 her mother's a so-called pastor, and Dang. she is whatever you call the the women under the pastors in, in the church, because there ain't no name for it in the scriptures. I'm gonna right. tell you, I'm gonna tell you what type of men like that. What type of men like that are some simps. Because mm-hmm. a real man is gonna order his house, and he's gonna make sure that his woman, his wife, is in order. That's and, right. And so read that again from the top. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 25 Bring it out. A shameless woman Shall be counted as a dog That's what a, a woman that walks around Dressed like a thot, dressed like a whore She counted as a dog And it's time for you men to start looking at those women That's dressed like that And start rejecting that Go, let's, We gotta get back to the old school We gotta get back to some respect We gotta start getting back to where women You know what, actually were shame faced Read but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. She will do what? Fear the Lord. So when you get you a woman that's shamefacedness, she's going to fear the Lord. And so right there, you're on the right path for looking for you a soulmate, one that fears the Lord. And we got to get back to that. So you mean they can't look on the sister with the tight dress on and, and judge from that to decide whether they want to you want a sister that fears the Lord? Hey. He said she'll be counted as a dog. Oh, okay. So if he know what he want, if he wants some, ch- he wants some puppy child. You know, gone over there. 
That's <laughs> what you're going to get. Uh-oh. You're going to get all those things that come with that dog. Right. Them problems. That mm-hmm. in your face. That wanting to rule over a man. You know what? Raising your children. You got to realize these women like this raise your children. And you know what? What happened to that 14-year-old girl could be your child. Mm-hmm. Yep. That could be your child. Because why? You decided to hook up with one of these shame-faced women who don't care, who's just wicked, just straight-up wicked. And we got to face it. Our women are proud, loud mouth. Hey, they whole attitude sucks. And some of y'all are mad right now because we're bringing this truth out. Hey, that's fact. Some of y'all are mad right now because the truth is coming out because we're not sitting back and not saying nothing about it like your average like 99.9% of your Christian pastors in the church. They don't tell y'all, don't come in here dressed like that. You're going to cause these men in here to lust after you. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that you're in sin. Hey, I want to give a, a woman a scriptures uh, so she can get back on that right path. Give me First Timothy 2 and 9. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure some women out there, you know what, they're looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, you know what, that's been me. I've been that thought. I've been that hoe. That's the I first mean, step. And, and you know what? They they saying, but how do I change? Right. How that's, do I change? How do I come back to the most high God? And that's what we're here for. We're here to give them solutions. Right. Read. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Read it out. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. In what? In modest apparel. I know that you most of you women don't have a clue what modest apparel is. But you know what? Maybe your grandma got something nice in her closet. But there's modest apparel. And if it's skin tight on you, it ain't modest. If your cleavage is showing, it's not modest. If all your curves are showing, it's not modest. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You come on and get with Israel United in Christ. We got women that make in dresses that we can make you some modest apparel. We got women that can show you how to change your life, how to carry yourself like a woman. Because a lot of times, you know what? Our parents have failed us. The men had failed us as men. We wasn't taught how to be men. We was taught to be whoremongers. Right. We, hey, Johnny, what, 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 uh, how many girlfriends you got? Right. Hey, how, many, how, how, many, how many girlfriends you got, little man? Mm-hmm. And our, and our women was taught to be hoes. Yeah. They was, t- hey, it's, hey, they was told there's plenty of fish in the sea. And hey, you better get that money. Exactly. You better get that money. And you know what? You can see them out there trying yeah. to get that money the by sister, any means necessary. Sister came on the Clubhouse app last night and said that a man offered her, like she was with a man for a whole year. He offered her marriage and children and taking care of her. And she she decided after a year that's not what she wanted, that she wanted to go out and experience the world. And have, and now has had sex with more than 20, 30 men. Bruh. And, 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 and sh- it just don't make no sense. What, what kind of thinking is that? Right. You had something? I can't even. It's hard to fathom. Like, the, like to be offered to be taken care of forever. And you say, nope, don't want that. So, like officers was saying, the word modest goes into not attracting sexual attention. Right. Mm. That's But that's what our people, that's what our sisters put on to attract. That type of attention. Then you wonder why all that person want to do is have sex with you and leave you. Just like Officer had brought out the way you dress and the way that y'all are moving, it just sucks. And you're doing it in the church. Hey, hey, Yo, because that, that, hey, he couldn't even think of another word because it's that bad. Hey, you said something that brought my attention. When I was growing up, you know, women took pictures and they stood, they stood straight up and, you know, and they smiled for the camera and they took a picture. Hey, now, don't do that no more. now women do this right here. They turn to the side. They bend that back in a little bit. And poke them lips out. And poke for them lips attention. out. And stick that booty out and do a selfie. Click. Exactly. And then put it online and then wonder why. For the world for the world to see. Do. Right. For the world to see. Uh, and then tell their man, you know what? What, what? what did I do? I can't yeah. find a good man. I can't, t- Wait, I you, can't take a picture? Come hey, on now, hey, let me get a let me get a script. Hey, look, look. <laughs> That's all right. Let me get a Ciroc nineteen and twenty nine, because of the fact of what everybody's been saying and bringing out. The way you carry yourself lets everybody know who you are. People say, "Oh, well, just because I dress like that don't make me a a, a whoremonger. Just because I or, or a whore." Let, yes, let's see if God said so. Yes, you do. Let's see if God said it. Read that. Ciroc Ecclesiasticus chapter nineteen verse twenty nine. 
A man may be known by his look. It says a man may be known by his look. So if a police show up with a police uniform on, everybody know that's the police. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody questions that that's the police. All of a sudden, because a woman wants to dress out of order, and then she get called all kinds of words, all of a sudden she say, that's not who I am. So That's, that, that's a double standard. So if the police show up with a police uniform on, I ain't, I'm not going to ask to see the fireman? <laughs> right. No, you're not. He got oh. a police uniform on. Read oh, on. Okay. A man may be known by his look, uh -huh. and one that have understanding by his countenance uh -huh. when thou meetest him. And one, and you can tell the way somebody if they have understanding by their countenance, by the way they carry themselves. Just like the officer was bringing out about the about the fact that if a woman is modest, she's not gonna dress like she finna be a prostitute. That's not how she gonna carry herself. Right. You'll be able to tell by what she's wearing. Read on, verse thirty. A man's attire. This is clothing. This is making it plain for you. Read on. And a sense of laughter. Uh huh. And gait. The way they walk. You got some women want to put like like officers said they want to take take the selfie, push they push their little their little back out, arch all of that, and put it all out there for everybody to see. Some people do that just because when they in public, just like that. What's that? That way in the exhale movie when the lady was walking away, and then she do the extra walk. Y'all don't walk like that for real. Some of them walk like dudes with Timberland boots on. Damn. Mm. And he, he, done, he done went to a whole nother spot. Hey, <laughs> hey I was, listen. <laughs> we we want to make it perfectly clear. Just because you dress nice, don't mean that you still ain't a hoe. No, that ain't that ain't what it mean. Right. But but you at least on the right path. Yeah, at least you're on the right path. Go back to uh, uh, First Timothy two and nine. Dang. Because we want to make it crystal clear for our women that hey, you know what? There's something that dressing modestly. That's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But that ain't the whole process. Just because you change your attire, you got to change your whole attitude. Mm -hmm. You got to change That's how right. you're walking. You got to change your spirit. You got to change that mind. You got to be what? Reborn again, as they there say. There you go. That's right. There you go. Read. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, uh -huh. with shamefacedness uh -huh. and sobriety. Stop being drunk. Stop getting high. I'm sitting there riding down the road today, and a sister right beside me smoking a blunt in the car by herself. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> our women, you got to stop acting like dudes. You got to stop. Hey, you got to come back to being feminine. You got to come back to your true nature. Hey, so, somebody put a post up the other day that said, bring, some, bring the feminine women back. I'm tired of all these no-limit soldiers. Right. <laughs> Damn. <Damn. laughs> <laughs> hey, read. Not what brought it here. Mm -hmm. Or gold, right? Or pearls, or costly array. Cause we know y'all can do that. Y'all mm -hmm. will get dressed up. You mm -hmm. will get. You will get all spiffy, shiny, and blinged out. But what? But what's becoming women professing godliness? What? Professing godliness. Keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Read with good works. With what? With good works. Hey, for you to have good works, you're gonna have to come into this truth. You can't stand on the outside and think you're doing good works if you're not keeping the commandments. You're going right. to have to come to Christ. You're going to have to come to Christ. And, get, and just so y'all know, when he read the scriptures about not dressing and braiding your hair, that's not what it's saying that you can't do and have nice things and dress nice. Saying don't let it be about your outer appearance. That's right. what he's talking about. Right. Because, because we got a lot of nice looking women in church. Yeah. They and they the devil that the, the Bible speaks of. The devil the Bible speaks of. Right. Exactly. Hey, I'm going to tell you straight up. We got a lot of women with head wraps. That's, and, that, and, that, that, the devil the Bible speaks of. <laughs> right. Dang. Big old smile on their face with a big shoulder. Oh. To the flow. Exactly. To the flow. Got to change that thing, man. We all got to change. We all got to get that. Uh, can I, Let me get two scriptures real quick. First, give me uh, give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Real quick. Real quick. Give me Romans chapter 12 verse 2 because now we, we, we've identified some of the issues. Not all of them. We've touched on issues that are in our community uh, that is that is rampant in our community. And we're now giving the solution. So uh, read that real quick in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. We have to change our mentality that we've learned in this world. Come on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now it's time to re renew your mind according to the laws of God. We haven't been taught that. 
How many times has the Christian pastor on Sunday read, do not prostitute your daughters to be a whore, and actually explain to you what that means? He can actually point out the whores and the whoredom in his church, but he will not do that. Read on. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your mind. Come on. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what do you think the will of God is? The will of God is to keep the commandments of God. The will of God is to find out what you're doing that is against God and how to get back in that good favor that we in the church or that you in the church like to talk about being in that good favor of God. You don't have to get the will of God because I, I want to get uh, the Ephesians chapter five and verse three real quick. Ephesians chapter five and verse three. So the, the scriptures just previously just read, change your mind. Let's change the, 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 the filth. That's going on in our community. Let's change the information that we're pushing onto our children that are going to be raising our children, our grandchildren. We have to fix that thing. Read that in Ephesians 5 real quick. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Come on. Or well, fornication uh -huh. and all uncleanness. Read on. Or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you uh -huh. as becoming saints. The Bible says don't let fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, don't let it be once named among us. Why? Because we are that royal people. We're that royal priesthood that the Most High God chose from the beginning. And we are that same royal priesthood that is suffering the, the curses that he said would come upon us once we broke these commandments that have caused us to be in this condition. And now the land is full of whoredom with our daughters. The solutions are right here in the scripture. We must come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments as the Israelites and keep and do these commandments, man. Right. Hey, go back to... Um First Corinthians 12 and 2, because I like what you brought out. And, you know, you touched on something very heavy because, you know, hey, it's a lot of women out there say, man, I did too much dirt to be going back to that Bible. But, hey, this is the way that you become new. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Read and be not conformed to this world. Hey, stop following the world. Simple as that. Stop following our oppressors. Stop following what your mama taught you, your grandma taught you. Let's start finding out what God it's trying to teach us. But Nicki Minaj is in the world. Right. Cardi B is in the world. Hey, y'all turn your TVs off. Right. <laughs> Simple as that. Turn your TV off. Turn it to IUIC TV. Right. right. There you go. Get you some righteous TV. That's right. Read. But be ye transformed. Be you what? Transformed uh -huh. by the renewing of your mind. Hey, you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to renew your mind. You got to bring your mind out of that whoredom, mm -hmm. out of that uh, the viciousness. Lasciviousness. You know them, them, them too much deep black hey. words. Right <laughs> now. Them, them ain't normal black terms. Right. You know? I try, don't I don't try to go deep that. right there. Hey, but you know what? <laughs> what you're saying is, what you're saying is, uh, to touch on the point that you're making is, that renewing your mind because you said some of these women, before you, when you started, you said some of these women feel like they've done so much dirt that they can't go back to the scriptures, that they can't, they right. can't fix it. But see, that's why Paul said that he died daily. So now we have to learn to renew our minds daily. Right. You can't just wake up one day and say, you know what? Thank you, God. I'm fixed. No. The same things that are plaguing you today is going to continue to plague you until you until you start applying these laws, statutes, and commandments and and changing that thing. It changes a daily, it's daily action. It's our it's an hourly action. It's a a, a minute action. Mm -hmm. You gotta constantly be on that thing. Right. Hey, give me the second Corinthians five and seventeen. That's it. Because you know what, this is what it's all about. You know, we ain't going to sit there and try to hold this against you forever. We want you to repent. We want you to turn back to Christ. And that's what this Bible is for, to bring us back into the renewedness of who we really are, to bring us back to the, the spiritual beings that we are. It's in us. We just got to learn how to bring it out. Right. Read. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Bring it out. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he is a new creature. Now nah, he's an old creature. He is a new creature. Guess what? If you was a thought, if you was a simp, you can become that new creature by accepting Christ, by coming back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. You can become that new creature. You can be forgiven for all the evil, for all the wickedness that you've done in your life. And we know that, hey, as black men and women, we need a fresh start. And when we get it through Christ, and they don't, but they don't realize that's what Christ died for. That's what this grace period is for. Grace period right now ain't so that you can do whatever you want to do in the world, and then you're gonna to explain to Most High God in Christ when you die why you didn't keep the commandments. 
If you got a phone bill and you don't pay it, they give you a grace period to pay it. But you still got to pay it. Just like you're going to have to pay for your sins. You're going to have to pay for the things that you do on this earth when you go to meet your maker. We must come back to the commandments of God. Mm-hmm. Read from the top again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh-huh. he is a new creature. Read. Old things are passed away. All those sins, all that wickedness that you done done in the past, it can be forgiven. So you must let go of that guilt that right. you have. You must let go. Because some people, you, some of our people, they, they may want to do right, but they don't believe that they can turn it around because they feel like they've, they've been beat down so bad by this world that they feel like they can't come out of it. Mm-hmm. But the Most High is telling you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Hey, that's what he told He told Paul what? My grace is sufficient for you. That's it. Mm-hmm. Read. Behold, all things are become new. All things are what? Are become new. You, hey, you know, no longer will you be a thought. You will become a daughter of Sarah. No longer will you be a, a whoremonger. You'll become one of the sons of God. And this is what's promised to us when we keep the commandments of God. If we come back to him, we will become new creatures in Christ. And, you know, with that being said, I got one last question. Give me uh, give me first Peter chapter two and verse eight real quick, because we touched on that uh, a minute ago about who we are. First, let's get Deuteronomy chapter seven and six. Get that first, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Because what you must understand is that you are the chosen people. Right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians out there that are listening. You are the Israelites. You're the chosen people. And you're going to, we as a people will remain in this condition until we come back to these commandments. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Come on. For thou art an only people unto the Lord thy God. He didn't talk into the whole world, and it's going to explain that. Read on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose us to be a special people. Thoughts and simps are not special people. Right. These are simple-minded people. Read. Above. No. Equal to. Above. Below. Above. Come on. All people that are upon the face of the earth. So there is no equality. That is in the Bible if yes. you didn't know where we read it. That is there. There is no equality. The people that God chose, which are the Israelites, which are you, Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you were created to be above all people. Come on, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You're supposed to be above everybody, but right now we're on the bottom of everybody, and the land is full of whoredom, fornication, uncleanness. We got to come out of that. Read verse seven. The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you. Because you were more in number than any people. Read on. For you were the fewest of all people. We were the fewest of all the people on earth. Read. But because the Lord loved you, uh-huh. and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. What was that promise? That we, the children of Israel, would inherit the kingdom of heaven on That's earth right. if we keep the commandments of God. Hey, hey, this is the end of the program. Listen, I'm telling you. Today, we was on the battlefield to try to save our sisters and our brothers from the adultery, the fornication that we've been in. Hey, this has been Wartime Radio. You've been with Officer Yuanathan, Officer Kalaya, and Officer Aton. Hey, join us next week, and hey, we're going to go to war. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, call us at 803-708-4861 at extension 237. Share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision 
The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.